Praise the Lord. River State, I said, Praise the Lord. You are strong. You are well. You are healthy. Now you are ready to move on. Moving on to a glorious future as a conqueror. I will conquer. I, in every situation, anywhere I go, I will conquer. The Lord confirm it in your life. Father, we well, thank you today. Thank you for bringing us to this final end of this Easter retreat at this time. We're asking, O oh Lord, that your power, your goodness, your grace, your strength, your enablement will do wonders in every life. And we pray as we go out from here, you strengthen us on the journey ahead in Jesus' name. Teach us your word. Instruct us in your ways. Lead us in the path of progress and growth. And we pray, Lord, that this day, a new beginning, of strength, Amen. of power, Amen. of focus, Amen. and of vision, Amen. you confirm in every life. Amen. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. We thank the Lord for this retreat. I will thank the Lord from the beginning. He has been leading us, teaching us, instructing us on who Christ is and on our identification with Christ. That as he is, so are we in this world. We're seeing Christ our Passover. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. We're seeing Christ our peace that grants us peace, calm, coolness, serenity, collectedness, even within us. And now, without any rope of confusion, of commotion, of strife within, we can move on in the peace of God. We've seen Christ, our pattern. He's shown us the steps, He's shown us the way, and He's shown us the life of purity. The life of holiness that now will walk in his steps. We'll sing Christ, a power who grants us the power to stand without compromise and the power to live an uncompromising life anywhere, everywhere we may be, and to be able to stand. And having done all to stand, no compromise in our lives anymore. All that bending, yielding, wumbling, and cringing, a fearful life that cannot live a life that is of the gospel, gospel life, anywhere we are, all that weak life, is gone in Jesus' name. And then in the morning sessions, we've seen 
our identification with Christ. We are crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live, whether I'm in the village or in the city, whether I'm in the office or in the marketplace, whether I'm in the home or outside, the life which I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and he gave himself for me. We're seeing our identification with his death. Dead were Christ and were buried with him. And we have seen, risen of Christ. That we are no more in the grave. We are no more covered up. We are no more hibernating somewhere. Hiding somewhere behind closed doors. Now we come out in the strength of the Lord. Because we, by his grace, in his strength, by his power, we have risen with Christ, crucified, dead, buried, risen. Now we conquer with Christ. I conquer with Christ. You know, in the past, in our lives, many things conquered us. As some believers, Many things around conquered us. Then we became Christians. And then we conquered a few things, external sin. Then we became sanctified. We conquered that self, Adamic nature. Then we are baptized, filled, saturated, empowered, energized by the Holy Ghost. And then we're able to conquer on the field of winning souls. But sometimes, internally, some of those enemies, they raise up their ugly heads again, and we're wondering, how do I conquer? That's why we're here this morning. That's why I'm here. I said, that's why I'm here. You know, the captain of an army was responsible for training his soldiers. And now they are to go to the battlefield. He must have given them all the training they need so that anywhere they find themselves on the battlefield, they will conquer and that's the joy of the captain what the joy of the preacher the joy of the pastor the joy of a superintendent the joy of a leader in the army of the lord it is that when his soldiers go out soldiers of the cross and soldiers of christ anywhere they go anything confronting them they conquer and conquer and conquer. You are that soldier. Yeah. And we are that army. We want to announce to the world that the soldiers have come for training. The soldiers have come for equipping. And now we announce to the world an army is coming. A victorious army is coming. A conquering army is coming. And anywhere you go, you'll be a conqueror in Jesus' name. Our young people going to school, you'll be conquerors. Our university campus uh, students, anywhere you are, however difficult that terrain may be, you will conquer in Jesus name young adults and professionals as we go you know the world they think they are strong and they think they can conquer anyone now 
you young professionals as you go to the world and you stand you will dictate the principle and the practices and the things that go on there you will dictate in jesus name gone are the days when a christian a soldier of the cross will go there and hide under a desk and then they'll be calling him names he will be ashamed and he cannot stand our day has come yeah. and we have power for the present hour you will stand and then our adults you know sometimes you're surprised when somebody has been a soldier for 30 years 40 years and then challenges that confronted him 20 years ago that he overcame those challenges come today look at 30 year in training in service soldier and he fell flat on his face all that time of weakness is now over or stand like soldiers or walk like soldiers will conquer like soldiers in jesus name romans chapter 8 i'm reading from verse 37 romans chapter 8 verse 37 nay in all these things all these things in the village all these things in the city all these things on the road all these things that is uh, manifesting in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us we make it personal i am more than a conqueror through him that loved me I didn't hear your voice. I am more than a conqueror through him that loved me. You know, if the devil conquers you, takes your smile away from you, you know that you are defeated on the inside. You know that you are a slave, a conquered man, a conquered woman on his side. If you try to smile, it's plastic smile. It's not real. But when the power has come and the grace is there and the strength is there and the testimony is there and the experience is there that in all, not some, not some, not some of these things, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us your life will be genuine your smile will be genuine and your testimony will be genuine that's why today i come to you talking about this conquering with christ conquering with christ three things we're looking at number one sufficient grace to overcome for overcoming conquerors in Christ overcoming conquerors in Christ when you are in Christ you know victory when you are in Christ you know power when you are in Christ you know the experience of conquering sufficient grace for overcoming conquerors in Christ number two supernatural goods for obedient conquerors with Christ. Obedient conquerors. Now, if somebody is a conqueror, it must be listening to the captain, the one who goes out of the queue, out of the line, as the soldiers are marching, and then, right? Let right let one two and then he goes up can never conquer it's the obedient one obeying the voice of her captain the supernatural girds 
obedient concourse with Christ. Number three, sustained growth for occupied concourse in Christ. Now, when we talk about growth, many people don't understand about growth. Grow as a Christian. Be steadfast and grow. What does that mean? You know, there are times when a child is born and the child is growing the muscles. But the inner part or the brain is not growing. And so you have a child 10 years of age Every other part is growing. The body looks big. But the cells and all the things in the brain, they are not well connected together. And they cannot send proper signal to the rest of the body. That child, although big, is not really growing. There are baby Christians after 20 years of coming into the kingdom. There are infant Christians after 30 years of coming into the kingdom. They eat, they drink, they take in everything we're giving, but their vision, sight, they don't have insight. They don't have perception. They're not growing in understanding. Their habit, when they were one year old in the faith, at 30, 35 years in the faith, their habits are still the same. Their thinking, still the same. And their perception, of Christian matters still the same after 30 years 34 35 years in the Christian faith they are not growing but from this morning everyone will begin to grow your mind will grow your brain will go your understanding will grow your action they will grow to match the kind of knowledge at the level of knowledge that you have sustained growth for occupied concourse for Christ. Let's come to number one. Number one, sufficient grace for overcoming concourse in Christ. Second Corinthians chapter 12, reading from verse 9. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. The same thing he told Paul. The same thing he told that apostle at that time. Because Christ is still the same. God is still the same. My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Look at three things there. Number one, strengthening grace to overcome common temptations. Number two, sufficient grace to overcome contending trials. Number three, supplied grace to overcome canal tongues. Number one, number one, strengthening grace. To overcome common, common, common temptations. The temptations that come, they are all common. Common to people like Enoch, but he overcame. Common to people like Samuel, but he overcame. Common to people like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they overcame. Come on to Daniel. And he overcame. Come on to Ruth. And she overcame. Come on to Deborah. And she overcame. Come on to Anna. And she overcame. Come on to Elizabeth. 
as she overcame come on to men and women who believe in the lord temptations come to everyone and yet because christ lives on the inside of us and is always alive alive within we're able to overcome strengthening grace to overcome common temptations hebrews chapter 4 reading from verse 15 hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of infirmities but it was in all points in all points in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin when it says in all points those who are into athletics they understand those who do wrestling they understand those they understand the point to break down the opponent those who do athletics in boxing they understand they know the point they're going to strike hard to make that fellow succumb and to fall and those who do like a team kind of like basketball like football and they're in their teams and the people who are very central and the opposition the opposing team they know the fellow to target the point so that that team will lose the devil knows the point he knows where to screw you up and he knows where to target the point so that they just fall like a pack of cards but christ who strengthens us christ who enables us he was tempted in all points like as we are yet without sin look at verse 16 let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need it will help you look at chapter 2 verse 18 in chapter 2 verse 18 for in that for in that for in that he himself has suffered being tempted he is able to succor to hell to support to uplift them that are tempted the lord will assist you he will uplift you and the lord will not allow you to fall in jesus name look at number two there number two there is sufficient grace to overcome contending trials Contending trials. Contending trials. What kind of trials are those? You have something precious in your hand. And the devil, the tempter, is contending with that thing. If you didn't have anything, you're not content. You don't have any property. You don't have any precious treasure you don't have anything that will contribute to the progress of your family you are just there you don't even have the normal life the happy life the daily life of a person who is going somewhere nobody will contend but when you have something precious a treasure that's why the devil contends so all those trials they are contending trials and once you drop what they are contending for and they say leave him alone for taking the treasure the man is empty the man is shallow the man is like non-entity non-entity nothing now 
to contend with. Understand, anytime trial comes, you say, hey, I understand. They're contending for something. And this one they are contending with, my birthright, they will not take it from me. They will not take it from you. You know, sometimes when there's a team, and as a team, and they're going to play, and this other team, they see that this fellow, one of the members of this team, is very agile. He can run. He can catch that ball anytime, anywhere. And he is the very point of success for that team. And so the leader of the opposing team will say, leave everybody, target that man, weaken that man, bring down that man. And then he will start in the preparatory room they will be saying some naughty things about him they want to distract his attention and when they say those naughty things then if he didn't know that they were contending for the key man in the team he'll respond to them and then once you bring him down you can bring the whole team down there's something in you that makes you a target there's something in you that makes you the champion in the team and they will contain but thank god god will give you sufficient grace anywhere everywhere look at that for in that he himself has suffered being tempted he is able to succor them that are tempted. He will succor you. He will support you. He will uplift you. And I know the Lord will grant you sufficient grace in Jesus' name. Look at Acts chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 3 there. Acts chapter 14. Long time therefore you want to understand that let's go to verse 2 verse 2 in verse 2 it tells us it says but the unbelieving Jews touch up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected against the brethren Paul came to town and as Paul came to town they knew that's the champion if you allow him let him alone the Christian faith will win and so the unbelieving Jews stood up the Gentiles and made their minds even affected against the brethren they were rising up, contending trials, contending against the champion of the gospel team. Running, running him out of town. Don't allow him to stay there. That's why now, look at verse 3 now, you'll understand. It says, verse 3, long time therefore abode they speaking boldly in the Lord they wanted to run them out and Paul if he had decided he would spend about two weeks there because of that contending trial he said looks like I will need to stay for more than two weeks more than three weeks long time therefore about this speaking boldly in the Lord which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands now you know, when we were young, at least when I was young, 
when we went to school and the teachers gave us one stroke of the cane two strokes of the cane and then when the teacher looked the other direction we patched our load and we ran away we became runaway children pupils and then when we get to another class and then we see that things are not working uh, the way it ought to work again uh, we get we go out of school we'll be roaming about the streets you understand why because we saw trial we saw difficulty we saw challenge and the only thing little children know how to do is to run away from school whenever there is any challenge that thing continues for life somebody gets married there's a little challenge and what she did in the primary school that's what she did, does now she packs a load and she runs away somebody joins uh, you know the artisans those who are working uh, and then over there some bullies came uh, after him uh, contending this is not a field for you he begins he packs his load and he runs away and in every situation of life what happened to them when they were very young difficulty run danger run trial run and the too much work run you couldn't do your assignment run they run and run and run paul the apostle he said uh -uh. We've got sufficient grace now. When we didn't have grace, we understand, we ran whenever dangers and trials came. Now I have grace. Somebody there does not have grace. I have grace. And when those contending trials come, you're not running away from your husband. The in-laws are too much for me. You're not running away from the local church. Those ushers don't like me. I want to sit here. They say, go and sit over there. You're not running away from the work the Lord has given to you. Because, you know, I don't like the way this happens and that happens. Long time, therefore, a bold day speaking boldly in the lord which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted and granted hold on if you don't stay you'll you will not grant unto you the signs and the wonders if every time uh, there's a little challenge a little persecution a little insult a little slander a little discomfort you say well they don't want me there i cannot come there again i can't you'll not see signs and wonders it's because long time therefore they are both there speaking boldly in the lord that's <clears throat> don't worry i'll not run away because of that <laughs> long time they are both and then he said he gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted them signs and wonders to be done by their hands i pass it on to you signs and wonders signs and wonders when you abide when you stay in spite of those contending trials look at number three there number three supply grace to overcome canal tongues supplied grace to overcome canal tongues now the tongues of many people they talk without purpose they talk without plan they talk without 
any kind of positive result I learned of a preacher that was invited to a particular congregation to preach not his regular congregation not deeper life of course and this preacher went there he had prepared the message and he did everything he ought to do to give the people there not his regular congregation the best and he preached his heart out and so at the end of the service the people lined up to greet him and he great greeted him thank you for coming we appreciate thank you for coming we love that then another woman came and said thank you pastor but i want to tell you that was the worst message i ever listened to in my life and the preacher became unsettled. What did I say? What did I preach? And this woman came and said, Thank you, Pastor. That's the worst message I ever listened to in my life. And then the queue was still there. She joined the queue again. And then she came, and the preacher thought she said something different. Now maybe she regretted what she said at the beginning and he said thank you pastor that the worst message i ever listened to in my life and so the pastor the preacher became concerned and then as he was leaving he asked the pastor please tell me so that next time i'll make proper correction what did i say wrong because one of your members came to me and said that's the worst message I ever listened to in my life and so the pastor said can you describe her who is that uh, person that told you that and he said okay he said don't worry about her her brain has stopped functioning and the only sentence she knows whether she's talking to a little boy or she's talking to a little girl or she's talking to any it's like you know when we used to use gramophone and that gramophone uh, the plate has uh, you know already a uh, kind of a ring there will be saying the same thing the same thing the same thing all over he said preacher don't worry about her that's the only sentence she has in her brain remaining there are some people like that the only thing they have in their brain remaining that they say negative thing it doesn't matter they're saying it to a preacher they're saying it to their wife they're saying it to their husband they're saying it to anyone they have a rigid canal tongue that does not know how to say something different but as we come to the Lord and He makes us a conqueror, then He changes everything in our lives. He'll supply you grace. You'll overcome carnal tongues in Jesus' name. Look at Romans chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 6. Romans chapter 8 reading from verse 6 it says for to be carnally minded is death and out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh but to be spiritually minded is life and peace look at verse 7 because the carnal mind is enmity against God for it is not subject to the law of God neither indeed can be verse 8 it says so then they that are in the flesh they think in the flesh they talk in the flesh they proclaim in the flesh they behave in the flesh a carnal mind comes to talk to them and they have carnal tongue they take it on and anywhere they go the carnal mind and the carnal tongue working together it brings defeat in life 
it breaks marriages it makes children to run away from you as a parent and it makes your parents to get disinterested in you with the canal tongue but from today the lord will grant us grace Amen. it will supply grace so that will overcome all the canal tongues in jesus name so then they that are in the flesh cannot please god we'll come to point number two now point number two we're looking at supernatural girls for obedient conquerors with christ now that word obedience you know if you study human behavior let's say for example now that's a grass field and you walk over that grass field it doesn't make any mark on the path you walk but second time you walk again across that field and you do it over and over and over becomes like automatic reflex action that any time you just walk over without even thinking without even planning and it makes a path on that road you see disobedience may start in a playful way in a normal way disobedience in any area and talking rot talking rotting may start in just like it's like a game and then you do that and do that and do that again now human beings have two kinds of mind the conscious mind and you have to deliberately diligently do something before the conscious mind will take it up then there's another kind of mind the unconscious mind the unconscious mind will wait you do it and do it and do it until your subconscious mind will take over and you just do it when a little child starts that disobedience little by little it becomes ingrained becomes a habit he goes to the examination hall and the invigilator says this is what to do the subconscious mind of that child had been trained to always do the opposite and when that thing will cut him down is in that example he'll do the opposite he gets married and the husband says dear darling honey whatever you call your wife this is what i would like you to do to make the marriage happy disobedience is already registered in her subconscious mind the opposite is what she will do a day to the rapture the preacher comes and he says we don't know what the rapture will happen it can happen any time from now let us do it this way the subconscious mind is used to disobedience already and that subconscious mind on the next day on the eve of the rapture will do exactly the opposite that's why it's dangerous to train your subconscious mind in a playful way in a gambling way in a regular way in a human way to disobedience that disobedience can play out in your life at a time that will be very costly but the lord girds and the lord protects the obedient conquerors who are conquering with christ it will turn your life around look at zechariah chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 5 for i 
says the Lord will be unto her a wall of fire round about and will be the glory in the midst of her look at chapter 9 verse 8 in chapter 9 verse 8 for I will encamp about mine house because of the army because of him that passeth by and because of him that returneth and no oppressor shall pass through them anymore I waited for your amen for now have I seen with mine eyes number one divine guidance for obedient concourse in Christ number two defensive good for obedient concourse in with Christ number three desirable goodness for obedient concourse in Christ number one divine guidance for obedient concourse in Christ what do you think that you have somebody you love him you appreciate him you want the best for him and the way he's trying to go you've been there before and how to succeed you know and you're telling my friend can I guide you this is the way to go thank you who needs your guidance but you love him and then another thing my friend this is the way to go can I guide you thank you very much Mr. Know It All Mr. Wisdom I know it myself and you try and you try and you try and you know he or she never follows your guidance God guides us he says go this way thank you Lord I know a better way go this way thank you Lord I know a shorter route and every time the Lord guides you girds you shows you the way you always know a shorter route a better way and you know the way you are going to do it and you never leave him then he leaves you alone he knows the way let him try he knows a shorter route let him try i pray the lord will not leave you alone Amen. look at psalm 25 reading from verse 9 the meek will he guide in judgment the meek the meek will he guide in judgment and the meek will he teach his way look at verse 10 all the paths of the lord of mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies if the lord guided you in the past and you follow he likes to guide you again and you follow then he likes to guide you again but if you are not meek if you are strong strong-willed strong-minded and you're always following your own way then he will not continue to guide that's why we're told in psalm 32 reading from verse 8 i will instruct and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go i will guide thee with mine eye look at verse 9 but be ye not as the horse as an animal or as the mule which have no understanding whose mouth must be held in with beach and bridle lest they come near unto thee look at number two there number two defensive guard for obedient concourse with christ defensive guard that the lord protects you the lord will protect you 
the Lord will protect me. I said the Lord will protect me. There are many things in the next minute we don't envisage, we don't know about the protection of the Lord, the preservation of the Lord, and the surrounding wall of the Lord will preserve you and no evil will overcome you in Jesus' name. Psalm 125, uh, reading from verse 2, As the mountains around about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth, tell me, even forever, even forever. And the word of the Lord must be fulfilled. I hasten my word to perform it. If this word is true, He will guide us. He will protect us. He will preserve us in Jesus' name. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about His people from henceforth even forever look at verse 3 in verse 3 it says the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lord of the righteous did you understand that what happens to the wicked will not happen to you they say he was going i saw him yesterday and look at what happened now it happened to other people it will not happen to you where is he what is she there the rod of the wicked shall not come shall not rest shall not smite upon the lord of the righteous lest the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity i will see you again I said, I will see you again. Let me show you something now in Acts chapter 27. Acts chapter 27, looking at verse 22. In verse 22, and now I exhort you to be of good cheer. For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, yeah. but of the sheep. Verse 23, it says, For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. Verse 24, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God has given thee all them that sail with thee. Now, I was waiting for your amen, but let me explain. Paul, the only one there that had the purpose of God in his life. And then there were 276 others there. And God said, you know what, Paul? Nothing evil will happen unto you. Not only that, God has given you all them that sail with thee. Who are the people that sail with me? I mean, when we say retreat, and then I come, who are the people that sail with me? When I say global crusade, and then I come, who are the people that sail with me? Your life is preserved now. In the day, in the night, in church, outside the church in the village 
on the road the Lord has given me all that sail with me I am uh, 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 listen I am deep alive number one now maybe you are number two you are number 100 you are number 300 you are number 3000 you are number 10,000 you are number a hundred thousand whatever your number God has given me all that sail with me yeah. will well, we'll end up at the shore yeah. you will not drown yeah. your boat will not capsize yeah. we're all going together we will reach there in Jesus name Look at verse 25. In verse 25, wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer. Wipe your tears away. Take your sorrow away. For I believe God that it shall be, even as it was told me. When I come again, when I come again, understand my language i didn't say if i come again not if when <laughs> amen when i come again you will still be alive everything the devil will try to double cross your way and said he will not i said devil shut up is one of the people that sail with me and look at it as young as i am i am still standing i am still walking if you want me to run i can run if i am still here you are not going anywhere we will stay together we will travel together we are protected together we will get to heaven together number three there number three there i'm looking at desirable goodness for obedient concourse in christ psalm 68 i'm reading from verse 19 psalm 68 Verse 19, blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. How frequently will you have heaven's benefit? How frequently will you have heaven's goodness? Today, tomorrow, every day, daily, God's goodness upon your life joy upon your life provision upon your life and my god shall supply all the needs of your life by christ jesus amen the goodness of the lord upon your life all through the days of your life in the day in the night during the week and then on sunday day of worship and day of service every time the goodness of the lord upon your life in jesus name we're coming to point number three now point number three sustained growth for occupied concourse for christ in luke chapter 19 we're looking at verse 13 luke chapter 19 verse 13 and he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them tell me say it aloud say it in unity occupy 
till I come. It's a promise that shows anything that will debilitate you, kill you, harass your life, torment your life, and put you in the cooler that you'll not be able to occupy the Lord says that will not happen to you but the power the strength to keep occupied like father like children I've been doing uh, the Monday Bible study since 1973 then 1983 came, gone. 1993 came, gone. 2003 came, gone. And 2013 came, gone. And next year will be 2023, and I'm still doing a Monday Bible study. Why? Why? Why will you stop in the middle of the way? Your father is still moving on, he's still going on, and his strength is not abated. He's still teaching, he still has his three points, and then he says one, two, three, and you are stopping your life at point one. You will continue. I said you will continue. Occupy till I come. You will occupy. In what God has committed into your hands, you'll occupy. If you are run away and we're looking for you where you should be among the preachers, you are run away, we're looking for you among the you know the orchestra and the singers. You have run away, we're looking for you among the security, among the ushers. You have run away, we're looking for you among the soul winners, the workers. This afternoon, come back and say, I am here. I went on leave without permission, but now, without permission, I come back again. I come back again. I come back again. And then if you have been in the church three years, four years, five years, you hear there are workers and he is occupied, she is occupied, he is occupied, they are occupied, and you are just sitting down there and your papa is also still occupied and you are sitting down there for years, three years, two years after coming into the kingdom rise up and show up and report yourself to your immediate pastor i am here i will not go back i am here anybody there i am here i'll be occupied and the lord will reward you and the lord will do for you what you never thought in your life in jesus name Occupy, occupy, occupy until when? Until he comes, he'll be coming for you. He'll take you home. And if you are occupied, when he calls my name, I will answer. I'll be somewhere working for my Lord. You'll be working in Jesus' name until he comes three things number one saving gospel through outgoing communicators for christ number two steadfast godliness with objective commitment to christ number three soaring growth with overwhelming conquering for Christ. Look at number one there. Number one, saving gospel through outgoing communicators for Christ. In Acts chapter 8, we're reading from verse 4. Acts chapter 8, 
reading from verse 4 therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere what were they doing preaching the word will soon go back to our regions at our local governments at our various states at our various uh, homes as we go back also the time will be gathering we have gathered we scatter abroad we'll be preaching the word in jesus name Amen. look at number two now number two steadfast godliness with objective commitment to christ in first thessalonians chapter 2 verse 10 first thessalonians chapter 2 reading from verse 10 ye are witnesses and god also how holily and justly and unblameably we behave ourselves among you that believed now some people think to behave justly holily unblameably they say it's difficult uh -uh. just like we breathe if you think of how do i breathe for the next 10 years you'll be thinking unnecessary thought all you need to do, breathe for the moment. In, out, inhale, exhale. Just a moment at a time. And it's easy. How do I walk? I want to walk from here to there. If I think, how do I do that? Looks long. Don't worry about that. One step after the other. One step after the other you reach your goal how do i lay one day at a time one day at a time lord sweet jesus give me the strength it will take just one day at a time look at your day all you need to do is lord the grace to live holily justly unblameably today that's all you need how do you eat? You eat a muscle at a time. So don't worry. Take all the plate of rice of whatever and then put it inside. You don't do that one step at a time. That makes life easy. And when you think about godliness and holiness, it's just one day at a time. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about next week. Just today, all the grace I need to live the life. And any trial that comes, any temptation that comes today, any word I need to speak, any word I shouldn't speak, any length I need to go today, all that's all God needs. And then, if you live that day, Monday will pass it will be a glorious day. Tuesday will come, it will be a glorious day. Wednesday will come, it will be a glorious day. And one step at a time, one day at a time, victory is yours. Victory is mine. Ye are witnesses and God also. How holily, step by step, justly, day by day and unblameably moment after moment we behaved ourselves among you that believe look at point number three there number three soaring growth soaring growth with overcoming conquering for christ conquering for christ not that we conquered in the past and now we are handicapped and we cannot move, move on we're conquering and conquering and conquering and we're conquering for christ are you there conquerors i said are you there conquerors i said are you there let's look at romans chapter 8 we're reading from verse 37 romans chapter 8 verse 37 nay how do you start a sentence with nay the devil is trying to say you're going back home 
they are going to meet that situation are you going to conquer and then he wants to answer the question for you then you say nay let somebody say nay, nay. i will conquer you will conquer victory is waiting for you success is waiting for you divine ability is waiting for you nay in all these things we we i can talk for the whole of deeper life deeper life everywhere men and women young and old we I can't hear my people. We deep alive were more than conquerors. We're with Christ. And Christ is with us. All his grace, all his power, all his revelation, and everything he did at Calvary is available for you and for me. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us his love will never cease in your life yeah. his love will never diminish in your life yeah. anytime you wake up in the morning you look up thank you lord you love me you love me. you love me and because you love me i am more than a conqueror through him that loved me and gave himself for me. Now, I give you that key. Go and open every door that was locked against you before. The strength, the strength to walk, the strength to move. You are pinched down, and that pain is taken away from your life. Released. Released. Why don't you stand up? Released. Now you can walk. Now you can walk. Now you can walk. And walk into victory in Jesus' name. Now you are more than a conqueror through him that loved you enemy will not destroy you they will not defeat you they will not stop your journey halfway moving on moving on i'll see you soaring up look at that aeroplane soaring up soaring up soaring up until it's so far gone we cannot see the aeroplane anymore. I see you like that. You're soaring up and soaring up and soaring up until your enemies look. Your enemies cannot see you anymore. Up! 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 Untie the rope that binds you. Remove the nail that nails you. And remove the thoughts that clamp you down. And now arise and soar. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. Brethren.